Good afternoon. Sanbonani. Ninjan. Nkos. Chancellor Judge Vuka Shabalala. Dr. J. Ram Reddy, the chair of the DUT Council. Professor Ahmed Bauer, the vice chancellor. Prof. Gwela, the deputy vice chancellor. Deans of faculties, academic staff, particularly you, the graduates, and your families. My wife, Lucy Paget, who is here with me, my sister, my elder sister, Dr. Daibani Naidu, my brother, Ailu Naidu, and my broader family and friends. I am indeed honored to be here with you today and to be back in the town of my birth because I really appreciate the fact that the Durban University of Technology, in fact, Professor, a place where someone earlier told me I brought the first union to organize in the academic sector, uh, has chose to confer on me this honor. And it's an irony, really, because in 1975, I started a Bachelor of Science degree at the University of Durban Westville. Uh, and to study to become a medical doctor. And then uh, my academic career was uh, interrupted because of the 1976 Soweto uprising, and then abruptly ended when they murdered our leader, Steve Biko, in 1977, and then banned our organizations. So that's when I changed my role from hoping to dissect bodies to dissecting society and addressing the structural problems of apartheid that faced us then. So I want to thank you, Chancellor and Vice Chancellor and the DUT, for closing my cycle of an academic life 35 years later. I think this moment in our history is a moment of reflection by all of us. You are the next generation. You are our future. And as you set out on your personal journey to your personal success and personal achievement, let us choose this moment to reflect that your personal success is integrally bound to the success of our nation and of our country. And so I can provide a few lessons because it is my firm conviction that you have to find your voice. And from my generation that brought you political freedom, there are some lessons. As a teenager, many of you in the audience are in your early adulthood, I was a very angry person. And I was angry because the system made me feel a norm person. It stole my human dignity to be a human being. I was angry at being called a coolie. I was angry at seeing empty buses that passed my path that I could not get on, cinemas that I could not enter, parks that I could not enter, even the Indian Ocean that I couldn't get into. And so, I remembered where I came from. And my earliest memory of the horror of apartheid was being evicted from our home when I was four years old. And not understanding why was the worst aspect of that. And so, I lashed out in my anger at everything. And I lashed out in a way that was leading me down the path of social delinquency. And there were many hundreds of us, not far from here, who bunked school from Sastry College. We were frustrated and angry. We sold black market tickets, actually. We drank because we felt that we were not human. And then something happened in my life that made me appreciate who I am. And that's the room we sit in, is named after, Steve Biko. 
And I remember this charismatic young leader standing in front of us, a real patriot. And he said something that opened the light switch in my head. And he said, we have nothing to lose but our chains. Because you can choose to be a bystander in the chaos around us, in a system that stole our human dignity. Or you could become a participant, and you could be part of that struggle for freedom. Because if you are alive and fighting, you may die. But you will die with honor. Now, that was a very important moment in our history of young people. It created what was called the Generation of 1976 that brought that tsunami of struggle that eventually led to our freedom. And I tried to analyze why people like Steve Biko, like you, have chosen the medical sciences. Because in life, we have to go beyond looking at just the disease burden we face and we are trying to solve. We need to go into human life and the origins of human life. We need to understand the meaning of life. And we need to go to the structural causes why we have disease in the world. And many of those causes we know because many of you come from those backgrounds. It's about poverty. It's about inequality. It's about corruption that steals the resources that we need to deliver what we promised in 1994, a better life to all our people. So I want to use this occasion, Chancellor, to dedicate to the one person that shaped my political life this honor that you have conferred on me. I dedicate this honor to Steve Biko. The second person that really shaped my life was my mother. And she was a housewife, like many of your mothers are, that you have grown up with. And she protected me from the brutal excesses of apartheid. She taught me the important values that I carry in my heart today. Tolerance, honesty, integrity, compassion, service. She taught me that color is but skin deep. That underneath our skins was a diversity of humanity, of religions, of cultures, of languages that were all one stream of an ocean of humanity. And she taught me that service was a way in which you will achieve what you want in life. And so I dedicate this award to her because she made me what I am, as many of your mothers have made you what you are. Now, 1976, we rose in our millions to say we reject the language of the oppressor in the mouths of the oppressed. But we were smashed, and many people fled into exile. Many thousands were detained. Many went into hiding. And then we realized that as students who thought we were going to lead the struggle for freedom, that we had left our parents behind, the workers and the women in the rural areas, the young people. And we decided to go back and organize amongst them and to learn from those workers and those communities. It took us 18 years to build this movement that eventually forced the apartheid state into a negotiation. It was a tsunami of struggle. Many people paid the ultimate sacrifice for it. It was painstaking work. 
but it produced a political miracle that you today enjoy, a political miracle that is written into your constitution about your right to education, quality education, quality health, to your right to have leaders who are accountable to you. That's what my generation delivered to you. Your generation has to make that a reality for the millions of people in our country. And so the greatest lessons in my life about organizing and about transformation I learned from workers in hostels, the most illiterate, the most marginalized, the most exploited. People that many educated people and the rich reject as not part of our civilization. But I learned from them that there's a wisdom there, that if we choose to listen, we will learn from the people who work in our houses, that sweep in our, the floors of your campus here, who collect your garbage every week. You will learn from workers Wisdom, real wisdom about real humanity. And that's what I dedicate this award to. It is to Elijah Bahai, who became the first president of Kosato, Chris Lamini, John Makatini, who was an organizer, and Peter Marisberg, who taught me so much. And they are amongst the countless that you wouldn't find in history books. But they are the ones that have produced the freedom that we enjoy today. And so I go on to my time in Mandela. An honor to be in the first parliament. An honor to be in his cabinet. And I remember his words. He said that overcoming apartheid, fighting poverty and injustice, is not an act of charity. It is an act of justice. Because like slavery, like colonialism, these are all made by men. And it requires the courageous actions of men and women to dismantle it. And so I look at you today and I hope that you remember this because this award is dedicated to people, that generation, that laid the foundations for what becomes the Constitution and what becomes our democracy the Nelson Mandela's, the Chris Hani's, the Albertina Susulu's. And today, as our leader, Nelson Mandela, lies in critical condition, I weep. I weep like millions of people around the world that I meet in the slums and in the villages that I visit. We weep because he was a leader of integrity. He was a leader with humility. He was a leader that acted with his heart and gave his life for us. And I look around me and I see this rising tide of corruption in our country. An education system that is failing millions of young people in our townships and rural areas. Where half our population, half those students come out of 12 years of education with very few skills, no jobs, and unlikely to have the dignity of labor in their lifetimes. And I weep. I weep for leaders that will unify us instead of creating divisions in our society, who serve the interests of the people rather than the interests of themselves. And I turn to you today, and I challenge you. Find your struggle. Find your voice. Translate the political freedom that we've given you into something meaningful that creates opportunity, that creates hope for the next generation. And so, I dedicate this to you all, this award, that you will find that conviction in your heart to do the right thing, to make us proud as a country, to make us proud that we can lead Africa, that we can be an outstanding nation in the world. And so, I remember what Madiba said again that what matters in life is not the mere fact that you have lived. It is the difference that we have made in the lives of others less fortunate. So I hope that you, this generation, 
will take a stand. I will be there to support you. And I know as I look to my own wife, Lucy Pache, that she has given me the greatest achievement I have in my life, three wonderful, beautiful children. Because as Mandela said, more precious than all the diamonds and platinum and gold in our country is our children because they represent the future of our nation. Thank you very much.